powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Final farewell. We are just hours away from the state funeral of the late President George H.W. Bush. I'm Nicole Killian on Capitol Hill with how Washington and the nation is saying goodbye. And with Bozeman's construction of a new public safety center, Gallatin County Commissioners have to go back to the drawing board for a new law and justice center. What that new plan will have to include, that is all coming up. Just ahead of 6.30 on this Wednesday, Chet Lehman, Missy O'Malley with you here. Our top story this half hour today is a national day of mourning for President George Herbert Walker Bush. The nation's 41st president died last week at the age of 94. And this morning, he will be moved to the Capitol Rotunda to the nation's cathedral for the state funeral. CBS's Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill with more. The federal government is closed because of the National Day of Mourning, so crowds are gathering on the streets of Washington as President Bush's casket is transported in a ceremonial procession from the Capitol to the National Cathedral. A state funeral for President George H.W. Bush will be held this morning at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. All of the living presidents are expected to attend, including President Trump, who met with the Bush family yesterday. Why isn't the president giving the eulogy? And it's because we have a unique circumstance here. My brother was president. You know. <laughs> it won't be the first time President George W. Bush addressed the National Cathedral in a time of mourning. On Tuesday, our country was attacked with deliberate and massive cruelty. Three days after the September 11th terror attacks, he spoke to a country in crisis. His father was in the front row. The emotions were unbelievably high. I got through the speech and I got sat down uh, in the pew there and uh, I felt his hand as my dad. It was very, very comforting uh, and the emotions of it are still with me. Thousands have come to Capitol Hill since Monday to pay their final respects while the late president lies in state. Yesterday, his family greeted some of the mourners. It was more rewarding for me to be able to hug people who were actually grieving and crying and, and to be able to share, I don't know, the strength that I know that I get from being able to celebrate a life so well lived. Earlier in the day, former Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole was helped to his feet to stand and salute his fellow World War II veteran. Numerous dignitaries and heads of state will be present at today's funeral, including Prince Charles, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and the King and Queen of Jordan. On Capitol Hill, I'm Nicole Killian. Now back to you. Incredible. Now, after the funeral, President Bush's casket will return to Texas. He will lie in repose at St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston until tomorrow and then be laid to rest at the Presidential Library next to his wife, Barbara, and his daughter, Robin. Uh, 632, here's a bit of history with the 41st president in the Treasure State. President George H.W. Bush visited Helena in September of 1989 to help Montana celebrate its centennial. Let me say to everyone gathered here, and to all the people of Montana that it is a great pleasure for me to be back in this great state. Happy birthday, 100. Then President Bush spoke to an impressive Centennial Cattle Drive, remarked on the landmarks of Montana's capital city. In his speech, he spoke of the environment and what he called a common concern among many, the need to, quote, awaken a new spirit of environmentalism across America, end quote. Now, Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney was Montana's Secretary of State in 1989. He says the president was warm and friendly when they met before that speech. As President Bush came in, he was extraordinarily gracious. Uh, you know, it wasn't a lot of fanfare. He just walked in and we all applauded and he went around and he just spent time talking to each and every one of us. The White House photographer was there and took pictures. Um, and we all got copies of those pictures, and, uh, uh, and then he went out after that and he gave the speech. By the way, Cooney uh, took his then five-year-old son Ryan along to meet President Bush at That's that time. That's incredible. That's absolutely true. In the uh, front of the uh, state capitol on the West Lawn, another remembrance of President George H.W. Bush. It's a tree that was planted during that 1989 visit. The tree's plaque reads, quote, this elm tree is a seedling of a tree planted at the White House by President John Quincy Adams in 1826, presented to the people of Montana in commemoration of the centennial anniversary of statehood by President George Bush, September 18th, 
1889. Wow. Or 1989. That's yeah. beautiful. That's Absolutely awesome. cool. Yep. I remember it well. It was a big deal. We were trying to scramble and uh, be able to, you know, get coverage for all of that uh, at that time. So I love it. Great stuff. Great story. Absolutely true. Absolutely great. How about those great temperatures, Matt? Just tell us how warm <laughs> and beautiful it's going to be today. Mm, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, no, I'm going to close my eyes and go to my happy place <laughs> yes, while you're yes, doing yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, temperatures this morning, single digits, sub-zero temperatures. It is frigid outside. 20 below in West Yellowstone, 6 Ooh. below in Butte. It is 5 degrees in Belgrade this morning. It looks like our temperatures probably not warming up a whole lot into the afternoon. We'll see mo mainly sunny skies with a few light clouds into the afternoon. We do have a little warmer temperatures on the way. We'll talk about that as uh, Chet and Missy send me outside to the Billion Auto Weather patio. That's coming up in about we 10 minutes. About our funny socks. We'll, uh, we'll keep you in our thoughts. We had to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. it. 635 and other headlines this morning. Newly released court documents. Say a woman who died during a shooting with police in Missoula might have wanted them to shoot her. According to Department of Criminal Investigation search warrant, November 18th, Missoula police received a call. 49-year-old Janessa Cooper had made threats with a weapon and was planning to commit a blue suicide or suicide by cop. This all happened when police arrived on scene. Cooper opened the front door armed with an old handgun and then pointed it at an officer. And the city of Bozeman's new public safety center was approved by voters last month. But what does that mean for the Gallatin County's facility? MTN's Emma Hamilton went to the county commissioners to find out more how the city vote changes and what's happening in the county. Gallatin County began to brainstorm on what to do about their facility even before the city's new safety center was passed by voters in November. Now that they know they'll have their own facility, the county is doing some serious planning. I think there is a certain disadvantage in that the law enforcement uh, uh, would have been better together, but uh, I think the advantages are we'll be able to have our, our uh, own system working and uh, we'll be responsible for those people that, uh, that are in our custody. The county plans to build their new facility on the current campus of the Law and Justice Center. It's less expensive to build a new one rather than trying to revamp the current one. It will be the new home to several county officials. The law enforcement, the sheriff, uh, the county attorney, the district courts, the justice courts, as well as victim services and uh, the clerk of court and all those ancillary uh, offices. To the county plans to keep the Law and Justice Center up and running while construction is happening for the new facility, which will be located directly to the north of the current building. The challenge we have in building that building it places it pretty close to District Court number three, which is kind of on its own out in the parking lot. And that building is, because it's so close, there could be disruptions to that court, and those are the things we have to work out. This new facility will be connected to the detention center, which is just one of the advantages the county is looking forward to. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting something that's going to last Gallatin County for the next 30 or 40 years. In Bozeman, Emma Hamilton, MTN News. Emma tells us that commissioners say that the project is still in its early stages and it's not clear how much the project will cost or when it will go to voters. In other news this morning, Montana Senator Steve Daines is back in the Treasure State after his visit to Afghanistan. <clears throat> Excuse me, he says United States is exactly where it needs to be and needs to stay in Afghanistan. Senator connected with Montana soldiers while on his tour. Montana National Guard uh, troops deployed have been there since June or are expected to return mid-March. In a conference with the media yesterday, Senator Dane said withdrawal would put America's safety at risk. The situation is complex. Uh, a U.S. withdrawal, in my opinion, would have devastating consequences and would put Americans' safety at risk. Uh, we have uh, direct evidence of, uh, of ISIS-inspired plots that are going on in Afghanistan to directly hit the homeland. And if it were not for the U.S. forces there in Afghanistan, the risk of such would be greater. By the way, Senator Daines also encouraged President Trump to go visit troops overseas, adding it means a lot to them to see the support. And officials with the Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks says there was no wrongdoing in the killing of a Yellowstone wolf that has gained national attention. A Montana hunter legally killed Wolf 926F on November 24th near Cook City. The shooting of the animal has reignited the debate between wolf advocates and critics about a buffer zone between the park and hunting areas. 
The 2013 Montana legislator passed a bill prohibiting the creation of a buffer zone around Yellowstone for wolf management. However, FWP commissioners have limited the number of wolves harvested in units adjacent to the park to two per year. Populations including wolves. And we also provide amazing opportunities for people to get out and enjoy uh, Montana, enjoy the wild country we have here and, and enjoy the wildlife, whether that's hunting and fishing or if it's you know wildlife watching and viewing. Now, Lemon says animals don't follow artificial borders, and when animal enters Montana, be it a wolf, elk, deer, or other species, it falls into the Montana Conservation and Management Strategy. So there you have it there. Yep. It is time for a quick break. Stay with us in a moment. MTN's John Amy has our latest on the proposed cuts from Montana Tech's campus and what was said at the public hearing yesterday when we return. Uh, but before that, let's check in with Gail King, see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we're in Washington for the first of two funerals for President George H.W. Bush. Former Secretary of State and close friend of the Bush family, that's Condoleezza Rice, joins us right here in the studio. We'll hear from two of Mr. Bush's grandkids, plus the new space race between Boeing and SpaceX. It's heating up. Hear from two former NASA astronauts now flying for the rival companies and see the prize they're both after on the International Space Station. Who's going to take that? Those stories and more. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.